Hello everybody, I once again welcome you to Midas GTS webinar. The topic of today's webinar is excavation with anchored sheet pile wall. Now let me brief you about the project that we are going to model today. As you can see here, this is the side view of the cross section of the slope that we want to excavate. And the excavation is being done in three stages, as you can see here. This is the first excavation stage, this is the second excavation stage, and this is the third excavation stage. For doing the excavation, first of all, we'll install a sheet pile wall, and we'll provide some anchors here. We'll pre-stress the anchors. They will be grouted inside the hard rock, and they will be ungrouted in the weathered and the weak rock. And as you can see here, the slope has three layers of different materials. The first layer is of weathered rock. The second layer is of weak rock and the third layer is of hard rock. So we are going to model the same thing in GTS. So we'll start from the basics. We will define the materials and the attributes with the materials. And then we are going to mesh the structure and perform the analysis. Now let me talk about the anchored sheet pile wall for a moment. As I said before, the rod that we are going to insert inside the slope will be grouted for a certain length and it will be ungrouted for a certain length. So, as you can see here in this diagram, the rod from starting till this length, it is ungrouted. It has no connection with the surrounding material. And here in the hard rock region, it is grouted. So, we have provided a cement slurry and the rod has been grouted along with the surrounding material. So these will be the material properties that we are going to define. We are going to define the different type of materials as weathered rock, weak rock, hard rock. And we are going to define the material for the pile, which is a beam element, and the anchor, which is a truss element. The type of material that we are going to define for the weathered rock, weak rock, and the hard rock will be the plain strain type of material. And these are the properties associated with the materials. Now let me take you to the program itself and we'll, I'll show you how we can define the material in GTS. So this is how the work window of GTS looks like. In the start model, I have already created the geometry of the model. And now I want to define the material. The materials can be defined under the property menu bar and when you go to material, you can add as many details as you want. As you can see here, there are two options. The first option is structure and the second option is crown. Once I select structure, I can define the different parameters of the structure. I can define the consecutive model in terms of elastic or worn mices. And when I select the ground, I can define the material parameters for the ground and I can select various constitutive models such as Moore Column, Drucker Pregel, etc. So as I said before, I have already defined the materials for the weathered rock, weak rock, hard rock, pile and the anchor. So in order to save time in this webinar, I have already defined the material. I have also defined the section for the piles and the anchor block. As you can see here, this is the section for the pile. And you can see that these are the sectional properties. You can also define the section property from the library of Midas GDS. Here we have several sections. You can select any section and define the parameters for the section. And Midas GDS will automatically calculate the properties such as cross-sectional area, torsional constant, etc. from the sectional property. So as I said before, for the pile, I have defined this type of cross section. And for the anchor, this type of cross section has been defined. Now I will take you to the program itself and I'll show you how to perform the analysis for this type of case in GTS. So the first step is to define the attributes. So I'll go to model. 
property and I'll define the attribute. The attribute is nothing but it combines the property, the material property with the sectional property so that we can provide a certain stiffness to our mesh. So first we will define the properties for the weak rock, weathered rock and the hard rock and we will assign the parameters of material to them. So first of all I have defined a plane strain type of element and I have given it the material property as weathered rock. I will do the same thing for weak rock and the hard rock. So in this manner I have defined three ground materials. Now I have to define the attributes for the piles and the anchor. So I'll define an attribute of line type. I will first define the attribute for the pile. I will define the pile as the beam element and I'll set the material as the material of the pile and the property as the section of the pile. Now I will define the anchor. The ungrouted anchor will be the truss type of anchor and the material will be the anchor material and the section will be the anchor section and now I will define the grouted anchor. The grouted anchor will be an embedded truss so in this manner I have defined the attributes that I am going to assign to the mesh. So the first step was to define the material for the ground and the structure. The second step was to define the section for the piles and the anchor. And the third step was to combine the material and the section together. Now we are going to mesh this geometry that I have already created here and we will see how we can apply the loads and perform the analysis on the mesh structure. So for doing the meshing as I said before you can have two options. The first option is the auto mesh and the second option is the map mesh which is structured mesh. In this example I'm gonna use the auto mesh feature of GTS. I will auto mesh the planner area. I will define the element size I will set the attribute as weathered rock and in the advanced option I can select what kind of measure do I want to use. I can use the Delaunay measure, the loop measure or the grid measure. I can select the type of elements that I want to generate as triangle or quadrilateral and setting up these parameters I will do the meshing. So here I am going to define the attribute as weathered rock and I will select the area where the weathered rock exists. So I'll select all the edges which I want to mesh for the planner area and here in GTS we have provided a preview option so that you can visualize whether the mesh that you're going to do is proper or not. Sometimes when the structure size is huge you have to have the preview of the meshing because once you have started the meshing it becomes difficult to cancel it and do the meshing again. So you just you can just see the preview of the meshing and now it, the meshing looks fine to me so I will mesh the structure. So I'll click on apply. So here I have provided the meshing to the weather rock. And as I said before, there are three excavation stages. So now I'm going to define the excavation procedure. So first I will define the first excavation. So I will name it excavation one. I will select the edges for excavation one. And I will define the attribute again as the weathered rock. Now I will define excavation 2. And now I will again set the attribute as weathered rock because this is in the region of weathered rock only. 
and thirdly I'm gonna define the three different parts of excavation 3. So the first part of excavation 3 will fall under the weathered rock category so I will select all the edges and I will give it a name excavation 3 weathered rock and it looks fine so I'll click on apply. The second excavation part for the excavation 3 is consisted of weak rock so I will define the name as weak rock and I'll set the attribute as weak rock. Again it looks fine so I'll mesh the structure again and finally I will define the third excavation layer as hard rock so I will select the edges again and here we go and we have defined all the three excavation now I'm going to define the surrounding structure for the weak rock so I will define the weak rock here I will select all the edges that the weak rock is consisted of here the mesh looks ok again and I will click on apply and finally we are going to do the meshing on the hard rock I will set the attribute as hard rock and here I have selected the name as hard rock and I'll select all the edges So in this manner we have done the meshing on the entire structure. So this is a cross section of the excavation that has to be done. So I have already only defined the 2D parameters for this model. After doing this we will extract the element out of the mesh because we have to model a sheet pile. So I will model the sheet pile by extracting the elements out of the mesh. So I'll go to model element and I will extract elements. I will select the edge and I will define the attribute as the pile. and finally I will mesh the anchors so again I'll go to auto mesh and I'll auto mesh the edge type and I will select the parameters for meshing and I will select the edges for anchor as you can see here so this will be ungrouted anchor and I will click on so first we can see how the meshing will look like and once we click on apply the meshing is done. Now I will mesh the uncrowded anchor too. And now I will mesh the grouted anchor. So I set the attribute as grouted anchor and finally we are ready to mesh the final anchor as the grouted anchor. So in this way we have completed the meshing for this model and now we are going to define the loads and the boundary. So first we will define the ground supports. So we'll go to model boundary ground supports we will give it a name 
and we will select all the mesh here so in GTS either you can select the mesh from the display or you can select the mesh attributes from the works tree so I will select the mesh attributes from the works tree here I have selected all the mesh attributes and once I click OK the ground supports are provided to the structure so as you can see in the analysis tab the ground supports have been applied now I will define the load so first of all I'm going to define the self weight the self weight can be easily considered by Midas GTS by taking into account the density and multiplying it by the volume it calculates the self weight so for that I will go to the load tab I will select the self weight feature I will give it a name and I will define the self weight in the direction of gravity since it's a 2D project I can define the self weight in the Y direction and I'll click on OK and finally we will define the pre-stressing for the anchor board so we'll go to model load and again we'll go to the pre-stress loads I will give it a name pre-stress force 1 since the anchors are to be fitted in different excavation stages so I'm going to define different pre-stress force for different grouted anchors so here I will unselect all the mesh set and I will only activate the grouted anchor mesh set so I will select the elements for the first pre-stressing and I will apply a pre-stressing force of 500 kilonewton and now I will define the second pre-stressing for the second anchor again I'll select all the elements for the second grouted anchor and here we go so we have defined two different forces for pre-stressing for two different anchors and this completes the load definition now since the excavation is being done in stages and as we know that when we perform the construction or the excavation in stages the stress results might be different from the final model so we are going to model the construction stages now so for modeling the construction stages it's a very intuitive process in GTS just have to go to construction stage and define construction stage option here I will define a new construction stage I will give it a name initial and here I will activate all the structure elements so I will select all the elements here and I will drag and drop it so here in this stage all the elements of the ground will be activated the ground support will be activated and the self weight will be activated and here I will check on the option clear displacement because since we have modeled the structure here new because of the consolidation and the self weight from the top there will be some deformation of the structure but we want to clear the displacement because it has already occurred in the ground and now the excavation will be done after those displacements have occurred so I'll check on this option clear displacement and I'll save this stage now I will define the first stage of excavation and here so I'll click on new and I will define excavation 1 and here I will deactivate the excavation 1 so excavation 1 will be deactivated and I will apply the pile and the grouted anchors so I will activate the piles and the ungrouted anchor 1 and the grouted anchor 1 because the ungrouted and the grouted anchor one are 
in reality the same anchor but we have meshed them in different mesh sets so we'll have to activate them differently and we will also activate the pre-stress force one which we have applied to the anchor one and we will save this state Now I'm going to define excavation 2 in which I will deactivate the second excavation and I will activate the ungrouted anchor 2 and the grouted anchor 2 and I will activate the pre-stress force 2. And finally in the third excavation Now finally in the third excavation we will deactivate the three different layers of excavation 3 and we will save this stage again. So in this manner I have defined four different construction stages as you can see in the analysis tab here. So, and as you can see here, I mistyped the name for the first construction stage as excavation 1. So, we can change it easily by first selecting this and I can change this name as initial and save. So, once I do this, the construction stage name will change. So, in this manner, I have defined the construction stages for the excavation. And if you want to add or delete any construction stage after you have defined a construction stage then you can do it easily in GTS. So let's say I want to define one more stage in between stage 1 and stage 2. So what I'll do, I'll go to again construction stage definition and I'll go to first stage and I will click on insert. So once I click on insert, I can define one more stage. I can insert it after or previous. So I have the liberty of inserting the stage anywhere I want. So here we can see all the stages. So let us see how does the construction staging has been done. So I will activate all the mesh set and I'll again go to the construction stage definition and here I will check on this option activated. So first in the initial stage all the mesh sets have been activated and in the first excavation as you can see the first excavation is done. In the second excavation the second excavation part has been done and the anchors and the, the anchors and the sheet pile has appeared already and in the, the third excavation all the excavation is complete. So this completes the definition of construction stage. Now I will define analysis case. So I'll give it a name. And I will define the analysis type as construction stage analysis. And in the analysis control, I will specify the initial stage for stress analysis as K0 condition. And I can also select the nonlinear parameter. So I'll use the iteration scheme as secant method. And I will define the automatic load step. So here in this way, I have defined the analysis case also. So we started with the material definition, we did the definition of the section, then we meshed the structure and then we defined the boundary and the load conditions and finally after defining the construction stages we are going to analyze this model. The analysis completes in about 50 seconds so in order to save, save time in the webinar I'm going to use a previously solved model.
and I'll show you the results therein. So this is a model which I have already analyzed and all the results and all the modeling has been in accordance to what I showed you just now. So here you can see what are the element, what are the displacements in what construction stage. So let's say I want to define, determine the displacement in the x direction or the y direction in any construction stage. So I can select it and I can see the graphical format also how does the displacement changes so as you can see here it gives you the displacement results in the graphical format you can also obtain the forces in the sheet pile as you can see here you can obtain the force the actual forces you can obtain the moments you can see the moments in the sheet pile which has been modeled as a beam and you can also obtain the strains so here you can see the strains you can also obtain the 2D element strain so here this is the strain in the surrounding ground and you can see how does the strain changes in the construction stages as you can see here And you, not only that, you can also obtain the results in the tabular format. You can also create the Excel sheet out of the results. So it's the full procedure. I mean, if you want to make reports in which you want to include some fancy diagrams for the stresses and all, you can capture the stresses diagrams in the contour format from GTS. And if you want to have the tabular format of the results, then also you can obtain them from GTS. Now I want to show you one more feature here. So let's say I want to obtain the stress at any point. Then I can go to the probe result function here. And once I click on any node, the result will be displayed for that node. So here I want to select the mesh edge as you can see here and let's say I want to obtain the stress here so I can select the node here and GTS will give you the stress at that location so it becomes very convenient for the big models that you can virtually move inside the model because of the flying view and you can pick out at what point you want to obtain the stresses so it becomes very handy when it comes to very large models Also, you can obtain on the curve diagrams, you can obtain the isosurfaces and here in the slice plane, you can define the plane in which you can obtain the, the results in any plane you want. So this is how you can obtain the results in GTS. So this completes the webinar for today and if you guys have any questions now please let me know through the chat window and I'll be answering your questions in the real time. So we have some questions from some people here.